Deep in Victoria's west, this unique mountain range is home to dozens of endemic species, breathtaking sandstone peaks, and now one of Australia's longest and toughest ultra marathons. So the journey from Dunkeld to Mount Zero is 160 kilometres with close to 8,000 metres of elevation gain. Uh, but really the, the difficulty of the course lies in the rockiness and the technicality of the terrain. The toughness underfoot, um, the mental resolve that you'll need to just keep pushing I think is, is pretty high and it's certainly something that I think anybody who finishes this race is really going to respect. Well, I do believe this is the hardest 100 mile course in Australia. The race begins at Mount Zero at noon. An entire day and night later, the first of the runners arrived in Dunkeld. It's a massive step towards putting the park on the international trail running map, but some in the international sport community question whether it wasn't already. Climbers have been coming to the Grampians for decades from all across the globe, but in 2019, many of their favourite walls were closed and remain so today. We've just been waiting and waiting and waiting for assessments to be done of cliffs that currently have not been assessed but are closed anyway on the pretext that there might be cultural heritage there. The range is home to 80% of Victoria's Indigenous art, but with hundreds of cliff assessments still pending, no one's really sure how many sites there actually are. That leaves climbers and traditional owners in limbo. So the area's been occupied for thousands of years. It definitely doesn't take a few days, a few years. There's so many places that have been uh, modified by our ancestors and protected for a long, 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 long time. So we've got no beefs whatever with that. The issue is really with parks and how they've gone about it. So over the last few years, after the original tranche of assessments they did, which was great, they've done three tenths of bugger all. And it's really frustrating. But now, with years of planning and a dedicated trail, not even a lightning storm could stop this race. We know that with this type of event over an extended period can provide a massive economic boost for, for the Grampians of Victoria. We know that more visitors are coming, they're spending longer uh, time here, they're spending more money. For us it's about balancing that visitation and ensuring that we protect the environment. Of 100 entrants, just over half made it to the finish line before it closed on Sunday evening. Michael Dunstan came out on top in a time of 24 hours and one minute. He and some of the other top runners were forced to stop for 15 minutes overnight during the worst of the lightning. Happy birthday to you! But by noon on Saturday, he'd marked his 28th birthday on the finish line in Dunkeld. Within 20 minutes of that, the gruelling effort caught up with him. He smashed the record for the trail and set a standard for the international running community to follow. And this time next year, they will. Yeah, look, in the last 10 years, I think the stats say trail running's increased by 1,000% um, in terms of participation and events that are on. Um, it's just, it's huge now. We could run a race every weekend. We could run three every weekend if we wanted to. <laughs> it's one of the fastest growing sports in the world. I have no doubt that Hall's Gap, uh, you know, in 10 years' time is going to be a trail running mecca. Rebranding the Grampians is an explicit goal for tourism operators and racers. But it's not just climbers that have raised an eyebrow. Three Aboriginal corporations represent the traditional owners of the range, and they have a very different approach to traversing this part of Australia. Every time we reach a certain checkpoint, like a culture checkpoint, which is usually like hill lines or swampy areas, We'll do like a bit of a like a like a welcome or exchange, sit down, have a yarn, bit of a trade, like a passport. It seems like there's a lot a lot of passports to hand out, and hopefully that could take something away from it, a bit of bit of that language or whatever it may be. Yeah.